Hi guys, I'm back with another tutorial. My voice is almost 100%. It's like kind of stuck at 97%, so excuse the raspiness. Um, but I'm back, and I'm so glad to be back because this is a class, of course, like all my classes have been highly requested topics, but this one is pretty epic because as most of you know, I'm half Indian. My mom is from India, and I did have a very grand wedding myself. And um, we're so obsessed, especially even in the West, we're all so obsessed with that Bollywood culture. And so I thought, how perfect would it be to finally, in this new year, have my first real Bollywood class with you guys? I'm so happy that you guys are here. My amazing model is right next to me. I'm going to introduce her in a minute. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to give you a little background of what you're going to expect today. So I don't know if you guys noticed this on the website yet. But there have been some little changes, and I, I, I hope that made a lot of you very happy. I know some of you were not able to register before this because we only accepted PayPal. But now we have every credit card option available without having to go through PayPal. So now my lovely ladies in Pakistan and some of the countries that PayPal is banned can now finally be a student and finally learn. So congratulations on being part of the show. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot and be addicted just like we all are. So welcome, welcome. Um, the other addition is the addition of trial options. So if you have friends that have been wanting to kind of join but not so sure if it's going to work for them, you can now let them know that there is a trial option available um, as a part of our subscription packages where you only pay a small amount just to give it a try for a little while. And then if you like it, it automatically converts to a monthly. So all those things are new. We also have a brand new blog that I just started. As if I'm not doing enough already, I thought it would be really cool to also offer more tips and techniques on the blog, which both members and non-members will be able to access at any time. Information at your fingertips 24 hours a day. And these are all personalized pics from me, things that I really love to share. It could be about makeup, hair, fashion, lifestyle. I mean, anything. It just... I, I'm sure you guys have enough of me on Instagram, but based on some of your comments, a lot of you are excited that I have the blog now, so enjoy that blog. Um, the first blog topic was about Bollywood makeup. I wrote that last night, just so you guys can have an idea of what we're going to talk about today during class. So, are you guys ready to go nuts today? I kind of am. So, before we introduce Jalissa, I want to um, let you guys know that the um, last giveaway, um, unfortunately, we, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, a lot of you entered and we haven't gotten a chance to go through all the entries yet and computerize it. So give me until tonight. I'm going to go ahead and choose the random winners of our lash collection uh, from House of Lashes and our bonus winners who will be receiving samples from Lily Lashes. Um, there will be four winners total, and those names will be drawn tonight, so stay tuned for that. Sorry for the wait. I know you guys are anxiously waiting. That's from our last lash class, which is still up on the website, um, so that will happen soon. And then new giveaway today. I'll talk about it right after class. It's going to be amazing, so beautiful, so you'll see that in a little bit. So Bollywood makeup. For those of you who have not done an Indian wedding, or maybe you guys have done an Indian wedding and just it was crazy, crazy. It's not that scary. Bollywood makeup is very exotic, very bold, very rich in tone. It is entirely its own category. There are so many different levels of Bollywood makeup. There's so many different variations. A lot of my um, Indian brides like the cut crease thing. That's more of the Arabic style, not quite Bollywood. But it has become quite Bollywood because my Indian brides have been requesting it so much. And now it's become such a global thing. Um, but that is a little bit more on the Arabic side other than Bollywood. Bollywood... Um, in general, just is the richer, more bolder, and more dramatic makeup techniques that we're going to go over. So I'm going to show you a very, very wearable Bollywood eye that you can do for fun for an event, or you could do on your Indian clients and Pakistani clients, Middle Eastern clients, anyone who requests that kind of a Bollywood look. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about fashion. A lot of you have requested that I show you how to do the dupatta pinning. Dupatta is the scarf that goes on top of the bride's head. 
And also this tip will help all of you who go to Indian weddings and have to wear the scarf on your head. How the heck are you supposed to pin it without it showing? Well, I'm going to show you the invisible pinning method that I use. It's actually quite easy, but I just have to show it to you because I can't really explain it. Um, so I'll show you that after we're going to talk about jewelry and talk about a lot of really cool stuff. So without further ado, I want you to meet uh, my new friend, this <laughs> beautiful goddess of a TV personality. Her name is Jalissa. You have seen her on Style Network, on Empire Girls. You've seen her all over bra um, TV, on MTV, on BET. I mean, literally everywhere. She's working on so many amazing projects right now. And luckily, we were, we were able to grab her for our show. <laughs> so we can show her off to all of you and, um, you know, get this thing going. So without further ado, here is Jalissa. Hi. I'm obsessed with Pamela, by the way, so I'm so excited to be her model today. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Well, look how cool this is. If you could really see the embroidery, you would lose your mind. It's insane. It's stunning. Now I gotta go get me a little boo. Yeah, you need to have an Indian wedding. That's yeah. what you need to have. Gotta Whether be you marry an Indian or not, <laughs> we're gonna have an Indian wedding for you. Well, you better be prince like and not a frog. <laughs> If any of you know a nice, rich Indian prince, you send them our way. So, look at her outfit. Isn't it gorgeous? So, this is from Lashkara.com. Um, I will go ahead and tag them on our next post when I post the final look from her so you know where to get it. Um, this, actually, I wore on my birthday last year when I turned 29. And I, or, oh my god, two years ago, I guess, because now it's 2015. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so a little more than a year ago when I turned 29, and I absolutely love it because it is so comfortable. It's a nice thin cloth, so you can actually wear it out, but you could dress it up with a nice jewelry, and this is from Panache by Guinea. I will also be tagging her in the next post so you guys know where to get stuff like this. Fantastic. I'm in love. And then the hair, I mean, we just had fun today. My lovely model chopped off her hair, so you know what? Um, hello, extensions is all. Fix. It is to fix. So you just put a pony. This is a clip-in pony I got on eBay from China like years ago. It was like 10 bucks. And then <laughs> this is from um, uh, hair extensions that I just braided and put over. And then we are going to pin the dupatta over it so we can get a little bit of height here. And it's just going to go like this. And it's going to be very, very pretty and very so princess-like. Nice. I absolutely love it. So we'll just have it here for now. Just you know, for the decor. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to pin it after the makeup class. So we're just going to dive right in because this is going to be quite informative. We're going to zoom in a little bit just for her whole face. Um, so you can see my hands and you can see her face and everything. And I will be explaining every product as well. So what we have on her right now, um, of course, I've adorned her with this lovely ensemble. But on her face, we have the foundation. It, it, and I'm going to explain everything that I already put on her. Um, and we are going to have um, old classes available to rent pretty soon. That's another cool feature that I'm going to roll out pretty soon. So if you've missed our foundation classes and our contour classes, I am going to do more in the future on different skin tones and types. But if you want to see a past one, we're going to have that available for you again pretty soon. So watch out for that announcement. So what I have on her is MAC Foundation. It is um, the Studio Fix. And I mixed a couple colors to get her tone. I mixed uh, 42 and 44 NC. And I set her with a um, with a different MAC uh, Studio Fix powders as well. I like coverage over coverage, although she doesn't need it. Her skin actually was very perfect before I even put anything on. So it actually doesn't look any different, but at least for the camera, I wanted to get that, um, you know, I'm the contour really going. just with my skincare, so. See, that's the thing. It's so important. <laughs> I never go to bed with makeup. Never. Oh, my God. That's one thing I was telling them in one of my past classes. Going to bed with your makeup on ages your skin two weeks. For one night, I'm going to bed with your makeup on, so don't be lazy. Take it off. Nobody has time for that. No, no, no. <laughs> two weeks? Two weeks. That adds up. Two weeks adds up. Imagine, how, count how many nights you went to bed with makeup on. Even I'm if guilty. it's like makeup I've done wipes, it. I keep them right by my bed. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll leave my eyes on, but if I'm really tired, but Just I definitely a, At least use sure. a wipe. Yeah. At least. Okay, cool. Oh, but my clients are really bad. They, when I do their makeup, because it lasts forever, like if you do it this way, it'll last forever. They'll <laughs> sleep like on their back. Yeah, I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing that for tonight. Two days. <laughs> I'll be here. It'll just cost you two Waking days. up. It'll just cost you two days. <laughs> Is it worth me? 
Okay, cool. Let's get started. So, I have the MAC foundation on her. I have the MAC Studio Fix powder over her. I also did the Anastasia Beverly Hills contour kit. I used Havana for contouring, and I mixed banana and um, golden peach um, for the highlights areas. And then, and that's pretty much it. I did not add blush, and I have not added shimmer. That's going to be our final touches later if we feel like we need to do that. Okay. Um, that will be optional. And I did her eyebrows using Anastasia Dip Brow in Ebony, no, in Dark Brown. Um, and then I set it with a little bit of caramel powder just to lighten it up and not make it too harsh. Um, and that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in. And we're also going to show you all the eye steps first. And then we're going to do lips. And then we're basically just going to touch up the whole face and uh, show you the final version of our a princess Barbie bride Bollywood edition. Okay. We need to get some Bollywood moves after this. Um, that my team can show you. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to show you all that. Okay. That's part of the deal here. I just didn't let you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then I need lessons first. And oh, I'll, I'll teach you how to salsa. Oh, deal. Anytime. <laughs> oh my god, I want to learn so bad. Okay, cool. Little so, heading gate. Oh my god, my husband's been wanting to learn so bad. <laughs> we'll have to go sometime. Okay, I'm going to be using, um, ooh, I like it. Yes. Okay, good. I love this angle. I hope you're good with it, and I'm going to make sure my hair does not get in front of her. So, no complaints. We're good. Uh, first things first, we're going to do eyeshadow base on her. I'm going to be using my favorite thing ever. This is Paint Pot and Soft Ochre. The reason why I do not use Painterly on my Indian Brides or Tan Girls is because it's so pink and gray, you're basically just going to give a muddy look to the eyes. This one has a little bit of a beige yellow undertone, which is going to brighten up the eyes very um, in a healthy way. And I'm just going to use my concealer brush. This is what I used for my concealer earlier. It is MAC 287. And I'm just going to dip it right in and go ahead and apply all over her eyes. This look that we're going to do is mainly going to be of eyeliner and a little bit of sparkle um, and some shading to create more of that almond shape. And um, so it, it's going to be very mesmerizing, and but not too hard. Believe it or not, it is not very difficult to create a beautiful Bollywood look. So just make sure you apply the base all over the eyelid all the way up into the brow bone, being careful not to mess with the brows, but if you do mess it up, you can always go back and fix it, no big deal. Makeup, nothing's really a big deal. It's just makeup, it's not surgery, so there's nothing that's going to be permanent. You could always fix any mistakes as you go along. So don't stress. Okay, now that the eyeshadow base is on, I like to do the under brow highlight, just get it out of the way, and we're going to be using a nice flat shader brush from MAC. This little one here, but any brush would do um, anything small like this, any small paddle brush. And I'm going to go into the Tamana eyeshadow palette, which unfortunately is sold out, but the good news is AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com now sells the individuals of each color that you could actually make your own palette with. So I'm going to go in with a color called Fresh. This is a matte off-white. And I'm going to stamp it on the brow bone just for that clean look first. And I'm not a fan of going in with too much shimmer right away, although you guys know I like shimmer, but I'm not a fan of shimmer under the brow bone right away because I just don't want it to look like a disco ball. I want to keep the shimmer in very strategic places. So unless my client specifically asks for it, I usually um, don't go in doing it right away. Now the that the disco ball look is not highly requested. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? You've been requesting it? <laughs> no, disco ball is so 2014. Oh my god, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with a blending brush with Bengal. I have Bengal right here. It's a nice caramel tone. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna apply this color right here, which I already just put on the brush. And I'm just gonna start shading in her crease area. All this is gonna do 
is it's gonna warm up her crease so I can start that contouring on her eyes so I can start bringing out her natural shape. And if I feel like I need to change her shape at all, I can do that in this step before going crazy with my dark colors. So right now I'm just creating a little bit of this shadowing going on without going too dark or too harsh with a darker brown. This is just a very soft caramel tone washed right into her natural socket space, which is right here. And I'm actually connecting it into the nose contour to accentuate the depths of her eyes. And I'm going to swish it out into her temple zone to create that sexy cat eye slash almond eye shape. So this is the part that gives you that almond eye shape before you even get to the eyeliner and all that stuff. So it's just basically gonna be a nice swoosh like that, okay? So do it to the other side. If this is your first episode of Dress Your Face Live that you're watching, um, my suggestion is that you watch the whole class first before practicing and then replay it once it is uploaded onto your members page, which will probably take about a day or less, I will be uploaded. It will stay up for at least a week. Sometimes I keep things on for longer, which I probably will. Um, and what will happen is what you could do is just replay it and practice once you've replayed it. So while this class is going on right now, I want you guys to write notes so you can fully understand the products, the placement, my, my way of doing things. And then once you're have all the products together and prepared mentally, then you can go in and physically do it on a model or on yourself. Unless you have already been watching my videos, you already know a lot of my techniques, then feel free to go ahead and follow along. Also, if you have plenty of um, experience, then no big deal. Go right ahead and follow along. But my, my best um, suggestion is to write notes the first time you see a class while it's live. And then just jump right in and practice while it's playing in the background during the replay. Okay, so I've now shaded in her crease. Everything's looking nice. She has a great shaping going on. Go ahead and open your eyes and look into the camera. And you can see a little bit of that depth starting in the crease. And you see the eyebrows popping a little bit more because of that depth and the contrast that we're seeing right now. So now we're going to go a little further and start deepening up this outer corner of the crease. With the same brush, this brush is MAC 217. It's the same brush that I used before. And I'm going to go with chocolate. And chocolate is a very dark brown. A very rich, rich brown right here. And I'm just going to use that in the outer corner of her eyes using the 217 brush. Any tapered blending brush is good for this. Um... And I've noticed that with my 217, I'm able to do a very blended version of a cat eye. And if I ever want it sharper, then I can use a much smaller brush. Morphe Brushes has a smaller tapered brush um, that fits that area as well. Let me have you look a little bit over here. Perfect. So I'm just shading this outer corner right in here and giving it a little point at the end of it, so it basically adds to that cat eye effect. Right out in here. And don't make big, big movements. Don't swish your brush around because then you're gonna get fallout. The reason why I'm able to do face first and then eyes is because I don't get fallout. And the reason why I don't get fallout is because I'm not swishing like a crazy person on her eye. I'm being very, very careful with my placement. And if I ever need to further blend, I can always use my fingertips to further blend. Go ahead and look straight into the camera. And now we have that cute little swoosh right on that outer portion of the eye. And we've depthened it with the darker brown here. Now we're going to fill in her eyelid with a beautiful gold color that I recommend for every Indian bride or Indian wedding attendee. Um, it is called Gilded. Also from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's in my palette for those of you who have it. It's this nice antique gold right here. And I'm going to go back to that flat shader brush from MAC. It's a small shader brush. And I'm just going to go right into the gold. And I'm going to apply it and close. 
I'm going to apply it by pressing and then sliding down. That way we get that wet look. So when you apply and stroke it downward, you get a nice, clean, bronzy glow on the eye instead of if you were to just pat it on with a million pats or swoosh it on. Doing the press and slide that I showed you from my smoky eye tutorial is going to give you that wet look. And it's just so gorgeous. So, so, so gorgeous. I'm not even joking. This is like the gold to get if you're going to be doing Indian weddings. Or anyone who wants that beautiful gold without going too yellow or too tacky. I mean, this is just perfect. It's very antique. And it's perfect with the embroidery from any Indian outfit. Go ahead and open your eyes again. You can see a little bit of that glow. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now we are going to um, add a little bit of a highlight on her tear duct area, and it's going to be basically just a pop of um, like a pearlescent tone. So I'm going to use is this color called Blush. It has a little bit of shimmer in it. It's very, very light. And I'm going to use any small brush. This is actually a brush from the um, art supply store. It is just a small little brush that I use for the tear duct sometimes, or you can use a pencil brush, no problem. This is from Low Cornell, I believe. Yep, Low Cornell from uh, Michael's Art Supply, and the number is 270-1 270 over 4. It's just a small little thing. I'm going to go right into blush and just pat it right into the tear duct right in here and make sure you get it underneath as well so basically the whole tear duct zone is going to be glowing with this stuff voila da, 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 da. and just make sure when the client looks down that you're just um, overlapping the edges just very slightly like I did so that there's no harsh line in between the light and the um, gold that you have on her lid. So it's all kind of flowing together. Oh my God, I love that already. Okay, believe it or not, we're going to go straight into eyeliner now. Um, I know that you guys, so what we did so far, I'm just going to give you a wrap up real quick. Um, we did the underbrow highlight in a matte kind of creamy color. Then we went straight into the crease color, which is Bengal. It's just like a soft kind of caramel tone just to give her that shaping and connect it to the nose bridge and also connect it out into the temple zone. And then we darkened it with chocolate right on that outer corner and we extended it into a little point out here. So you have to kind of practice that movement to get it into a point. If you're having a hard time to get this into a point, then in that case, you would need to use a shadow shield or some sort of tissue to help guide you. This is a shadow shield right here. It's a sticker and you could totally use it right here. Stick it on or just hold it up and then do all your brushing movements. And then when you remove it, you have this nice sharp edge. So this is another way to help you if you're still trying to practice to perfect that technique. Ooh, where'd you get those? Uh, shadowshields.com. Um, they, they're actually in a lot of drugstores. Oh, yeah. It's, I think it's like 10 bucks a box. It's like an, a ton of different pieces in each box and a lot of people mute people use it under their lips too when they're using red lipstick so it doesn't like give a weird edge or something mm -hmm. if you have a problem with lipstick or whatever great idea really awesome good product all right so we're going to go right into eyeliner now we're going to line her whole eye with black i'm going to use ink lots as you guys have seen on my blog and also on my post on instagram ink lot black gel eyeliner is my like hands down favorite ink lot has such great pigments it really does. I love it. You try the liner? Yes. Oh my it's god. Best. Nothing's better that I've found so far. There's a lot that come close, but in my opinion, nothing's better. See how much I use it? Yep. I stocked up during IMAX. So I'm scooping some out with my um, 263 brush from MAC. This is just a angled eyeliner brush. But if you guys are used to using those really skinny eyeliner brushes, that's fine too. It's just I find it's a lot easier. So I'm just going to put some on my hands and I'm going to sharpen the brush like a knife. That's that's the key way of using this particular eyeliner. You have to sharpen your brush like a knife so that you're not getting gunk all over the place. 
And I'm going to do her water line first. Go ahead and look up to the ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and slide this color all the way to the corner of her eyes. And I'm going to go really heavy and I'm also going to bleed it over the edge of her lashes. Now this is the thing. With almond shaped eyes and Indian eyes and eyes that are like that you want to give that extra definition to, you need to overline them to fill over her waterline and over her lash line and over the lash roots so that her eyes can look big again. If I were to just line the inside of her waterline, then her eyes would look very, very small. So you would need to bleed it over the edge and then we're going to smudge it. So first, make sure you're bleeding over the edge. Don't be afraid. Just frickin' put it on your client. Go all the way to the corner of the eyes and bleed right under the lash line. You're going to go pretty thick with that. And then, oh, so crazy already, right? Good. Then, once you apply it, you need to set it with black eyeshadow. The black eyeshadow that Anastasia and I created for the palette Noir is the blackest black in the market. It is serious stuff. And so you can still get it on um, her website as a single. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply it um, in her waterline and below her waterline. So we're going to apply it pretty thick with the um, what brush is this? 231 brush from MAC. And I'm just going to put the shadow shield right here to protect me from fallout. I'm not sticking it on. I'm just putting it on. And I'm going to stamp my black eyeshadow right in her waterline. And remember, every few stamps, the trick is to reload your brush with product so you're not running out as you're going in. So I'm going to take a break every couple of stamps to grab her product, and during that break, she's able to blink her eyes because this is not a very comfortable step, I can tell you that. Now that that's on, I can go underneath with whatever's left on my brush, or I could grab more product and start smudging below the line. Right in there. Go ahead and blink, blink, blink if anything's bothering you. And then go in with a pencil brush. This is my Sigma pencil brush here. Let me show it to you guys. This is Sigma E30 pencil brush. And I'm going to use that to blend below the black with chocolate. So I'm going to go back to chocolate, the dark brown color, and look up all the way. And I'm just going to, very thick, do a nice blend. Let me get rid of this little smudge here. I'm going to very thickly blend that right under her eyes. So now you guys can see this awesome fade of black to brown right underneath her eyes. And it makes the eyes look very smoky and very sensual and very like mysterious. It's just absolutely stunning. I just, I love doing this with my clients because it looks it makes the eyes look really huge in comparison to just putting it, putting the black inside the waterline. So I'm going to do it again on the other side. I'm going to have you turn slightly this way. Perfect. And look up. Put down that shadow shield. Get your black eye shadow. And start stamping away. Make sure you're setting the whole waterline. Our Indian brides love to cry on their wedding day. So this is only going to make it more waterproof than it already is. And every few stamps, we're going to reload. And go all the way into that inner corner as well. I love it already. And now we're going to start smudging underneath the lashes. Just to start that gradient. And then we're going to go in with the pencil brush with the brown. Back to pencil brush, back to chocolate. 
And I love to start in the center just so I know where I'm going and then swish under the edges and make sure it's all fading. So we have this gorgeous, gorgeous, smoky under eye. It's just, it already makes the eyes look so big that we don't have to go that crazy with the top part of the eye. But we still will anyway for the sake of the class because hello, it's Bollywood. <laughs> but so far so good. Are you guys following? Everything is cool. Make sure if you have any questions, you're writing them in my last post, the one where I am hiding my lovely model's face. <laughs> Go ahead and write your questions down in that post so we can answer them later for you. So, so far, we have now smoked out the bottom part of her eyes. So, now we're ready to balance the top part. It's totally up to you guys if you want to just get the top part over with. I just love to like start balancing and like building up to this grand finale instead of just jumping right to it and then having to blend later. So what I'm going to do for the top is we're going to go back to the um, 263 brush from MAC and go back to Inglot Gel Liner and we will create this lovely wing eye. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks that help me create it with less chances of messing up. So while her eyes are open and looking into the camera, I'm going to go ahead and kind of visualize where I would want my wings to go. So I'm thinking I just want them to go out. I don't want them to go too high up. I don't want them to go too straight. So maybe some angle that's in between straight and a little bit of height would be perfect for her eye shape. So while her eyes are open, I'm actually going to go right in, sharpen my brush, and create a little fakey wing to begin with just to give me an idea of where I want to go. And I'm going to match that to the other side. The same, sorry, I know I covered you for a second. Um, to the other side there, I'm going to turn you just a little bit, sorry, just so I don't have to cover. So match both wings first. Double check it to make sure that they're looking like they're going in the same direction. And then we're going to go ahead and complete the eyeliner. So now that the wings are on, I don't even have to worry about the wings anymore. Now she can just close her eyes and I can lift up her lid so I can get right in and finish the rest of her eyeliner. So I'm just going to go in as normal. I'm going to completely ignore that the wing is even there now that it's not even a worry for me. And I'm just going to draw in the rest of her liner. as usual. Just make sure it's smooth, no chunks. I'm using this tip even when I'm not doing Bollywood eyes. Yeah? Do you understand yeah. the struggle <laughs> to try to get the a line to just continue to go? Uh -huh. It's like... That is so funny. Yeah. Oh yeah, this tip can work for any look. I love it. Yay! I'm like, like that's how the professionals <laughs> do it. Good stuff. So now we have to somehow connect this wing. I'll have you turn this way so they can see. Mm -hmm. Let's put this down. We're going to connect this wing into the rest of the eye look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go almost to the tip of the wing and just give it a straight line connection into the rest of the eyeliner so it looks like it's flowing. Now go ahead and look back into the camera. So now it just has this cute little wing, but it's not a wing out of nowhere. It's totally connected into the rest of the eyeliner. We'll do the same on the other side. I'm just going to line the whole eye as normal. Make sure that in order to avoid gaps in the lashes, you have to lift up the skin here so you can get really deep with your eyeliner. Otherwise, if you don't get deep enough, when she opens her eyes, it's going to show gaps. So not Bollywood. And then make sure you're, you're smoothing out the line once you're done with all your sections. And then now we just have to connect the wing. So here's the wing here. I'm going almost to the tip and I'm giving it a straight line connection and filling in any gaps. And now we have this really cool Bollywood wing. Everything's looking nice and clean. Beautiful. What is gorgeous? I'm going to thicken up this side a little bit more actually. I 
and just make sure both sides are balanced. Since we still have product on our hands, we might as well use it. Okay, cool. So now that the liner is done, look how finished she looks and we have not even added sparkle yet. We've not added mascara or lashes yet. It's so not done, but it looks so finished. It's phenomenal. The beauty of Bollywood makeup is really mainly in the liner. Okay. I just love this thing. I want to put it back. <laughs> but I don't want to like pin it without explaining it to you guys. So I'm going to pin it at the end, but I'm just going to maybe have it forward so it doesn't keep falling. Okay, awesome. So now, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Great. And the Tika is so pretty. Okay. So now that this top liner is on, we're going to go ahead and use more black eyeshadow to smoke out that outer corner of it. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. I'm going to use my small little Morphe brush, my small little tapered Morphe brush. The number is M506. And we're going to use this right in here to add a little black. So I'm going to go right into my more eyeshadow. Just with the tip of the brush. Do not oversaturate your brush with black because then it's going to spew everywhere. So I only touched the tip of my brush with black. And now I'm just going to get right in here. Basically where the crease fold meets the eyeliner wing. Go ahead and open your eyes again. See where her fold meets the eyeliner wing? That's where you're going to place it. So what I'm going to do is, go ahead and open it again one more time. If you need to do this trick, then do it with your friends if you don't know where to put it. While your client's eyes are open, go ahead and touch with your brush tip that area where her crease fold meets her wing. Then she can close, go ahead and close, and now you know exactly where to go. And you can just saturate that area with black or brown or purple or whatever color you're using for her bridal outfit or fancy party outfit, wherever your client is going or wherever you're going. Just fill up that little tiny area with black. And I'm not oversaturating. I am not throwing it everywhere. I'm only saturating in that little area where it meets. And then now with whatever's left in this brush, I'm just going to slide it over to overlap with that chocolate in the crease and overlap slightly with that gold in the outer corner. So now it has this beautiful gradient. If you can just turn a little bit, this beautiful gradient right in here, which is seamless and we barely blended guys. Like that's the whole thing about my classes. If you're new here, you're going to know that Tamana doesn't blend. I throw on color and I slide it over to overlap and that's how I make it look like it's blended. But I did not sit here and blend for hours. It took, what is it? Like five minute eye. If I wasn't explaining every step, it would take five minutes. I can do a volume bright so fast. It's not even funny. Okay, cool. So we're going to do the same on the other side. Oh, it looks so sexy. So sexy. Okay. <laughs> I get excited. And so remember, where that fold meets the, the wing, that's where you're going to apply your little black area. And then you're just going to keep building it until it's perfectly saturated to the level that you're happy with. And again, every time I'm grabbing more products, I'm literally only grabbing it with the tip of my brush, which is why I love this Morphe brush so much, because it allows me to do this step without overly applying product. And then at the end, so now I've created this little V thing. Now all I have to do is slide color over a little bit to overlap it with the previous tones. So now it looks completely seamless. So now she can go ahead and look straight into the camera. We have this beautiful almond shape eye that we've created and accentuated from her natural shape. But even if your client doesn't already have total almond shape eyes, because of that first step we did with that contouring with the bangle color, you can create that look by and tweak your client's eye shape very easily. Love, 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 love. Okay, I'm going to take a step back and check her just to make sure that everything looks even. Look down. I'm going to add just a little bit more black. Sometimes you have to step back to see the bigger picture. So I highly recommend if you're not sure if your client's even, take a step back and get a better look at your client's face. And that way you can really see the balance of it. And another trick is take a picture of your client with her eyes closed and her eyes looking into the camera. Look at the pictures because the pictures will tell you what's not in balance. Sometimes I'll do brows as beautiful as I can possibly do it. 
And then in the picture, I see that one brow is a little higher, but I couldn't tell in real life because in real life, what your eyes are doing is it's translating to your brain what it wants to compensate for. So if it's, if your eyes are seeing something that's a little unbalanced, your brain is going to balance it for your eyes and then you can't really notice it. But when you're looking at a picture, then you can start to see, oh, oh my God, like something looks a little off. It's crazy. So it's, it, it's always helpful to step back and see and also to look in a picture. And the pictures don't lie. Okay. <laughs> Unless you've already photoshopped it. Okay. So now that we're done with the black, I'm just going to give her a little cleanup. Not that anything fell, but just in case there's a little dust going on, I'm going to flick it right off her. And now we are ready to apply some shimmer. I love it. So one of my most um one of my most uh, favorite shimmer products, um, like glitter products that's most easy to use. Like if you guys have seen my Arabic eye tutorial, I use straight up glitter and I mix it with gel and it was like a sheet of glitter and it was fabulous. For this look, I'm doing a Bollywood look. So glitter is optional. Not every bride of mine wants that glitter look, but a lot of them love it. And what if you have a bride or even yourself you want that fabulous look, but you don't want to look like you're doing too much. So in that case, I use one of these. This is the Urban Decay Glitter Liner. It's called um, Heavy Metal Glitter Liner in, um, I think it's called, it's definitely called Midnight Cowboy. I bought it a lot and the sticker's gone. But um, Midnight Cowboy. And it's just like a glitter gel liner. Um, and NYX also has one. A lot of companies make this. And all you do is, go ahead and, yeah, close. All I do is just drag it along. Her whole eyelid wherever I put the gold um, eyeshadow and then when as it's drying I use a brush like any flat brush this is MAC 195 and I just pat it down to spread it or to flatten it and then now you have this kind of a wet glitter look go ahead and yeah look down side to side and you have this beautiful glitter uh, look without having a chunky glitter, without having to use gel. Let's say you're in a hurry and you have to do this whole party. And brides, Indian brides, a lot of the um, Punjabi brides get married super early in the morning. So you're literally at their house at like 5 a.m., 4 a.m., sometimes 3 a.m. I've done a wedding at 3 a.m. It was a little crazy. I didn't sleep the night before. So, um, you know, when, when it's that early or if you're in a hurry or something's going on, you just and the bride herself doesn't really want to feel a heavy sheet of glitter on her eyes, then this is so easy because you literally don't feel it. It's lightweight, it's it, you just it's a very thin layer and it's very sheer. So it's not like a crazy heavy glitter, it's just sheer, but it sparkles just enough for the camera and just enough to look good with her clothes. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just give a nice thin layer of this glitter, and then you can spread it and pat it down with a flat any flat brush, a concealer brush, whatever. This is a MAC 195 brush, I just love the shape of it. Um, and then I just uh, pat it across and it's it's done. That's the gorgeous glitter. Love, love. Now, I want to show you one other option before we put on her lashes. Um, I would like to show you if your bride or yourself wants to use some red on the eyes. Now, I'm not a huge fan of putting red on the eyes. What I end up doing is sometimes I'll add a very warm crease so it can look like it's kind of on the red side, but it's not quite. And this trick you can do after you've already done the eyes, like I've now done pretty much the whole eye, um, but if, some, if you wanna incorporate color, you would do it either in the crease or on the bottom edge of the liner. So like, let's say she wanted me to incorporate a navy blue in her eye. I would put that navy blue probably either right in between her corner and her lid, or I could put it right underneath her eye on the bottom. Um, I probably wouldn't put blue in the crease just because it's such a dark color and I don't want to go too dark in the crease. But let's say she wanted me to incorporate pink, ignoring what she's wearing if she was wearing pink and gold. I could easily have a gold eye with a dark blackish brown corner and then I could put pink right in the crease. So what we're going to do because she's wearing blue and red, I'm going to just warm up her crease a little bit. Um, the color that I'm going to use is from my old MAC palettes that I made. Um, I think it's called Brown Script. I could be wrong. It's been a really long time since I've used my MAC palettes, the one from What's in My Kit, the video I just posted a while back. 
yeah, brown script. It's this color right here. It's just a very warm, warm brown, almost like a reddish kind of a brown. And I'm going to go back to my 217 brush, give it a little whack, and I'm just going to warm up her crease further with this color. So it could just look, it just makes it look a little warmer. And that does tie in to the, to the red parts of her outfit so that it just has a little pop of warmth in there. So I'm just sticking it right into her crease. And the cool thing is we already did all of our blending with the previous colors, so you don't have to worry about blending this color. You just slap it on and it's good to go. And you're right. So that just gave a very, very slight warmish feel and that's very popular with Indian brides. They love that warm crease. So whether you're giving them a bright pink crease to go with their pink outfit or this reddish color to go with the reds, um, or you could add blue in the corner on the bottom to go with blues. There's so many options of incorporating bold color into your eye look. But for her, we're actually going to go with the red lip. So I don't want to go too red on her eyes. So that's why I did a brownish red instead on her eyes. So she'd be happy with the warm look without looking like a clown at the end of the day. Because we don't want to. None of that. So now we're ready for her lovely um, mascara. First off, we are going to curl her lashes using my favorite Shiseido eyelash curler. I'm going to look down at the floor. I'm going to lift her lashes, get right in, give it a nice little curl. Is this okay? Yeah. I'm used to it. I live by a lash curler. Oh my god. Have you ever had an accident? No. Awesome. Good to hear. I, which I don't recommend, is um, sometimes I'll even curl my lashes while I'm driving. <laughs> what? I know. Okay. <laughs> you know you have a meeting to go to, or you're in a rush, or you just want to look cute. cute. Oh my I'll god. I'll even do like clear mascara and then just curl it because it makes such a difference That's on the so days funny. that I don't feel like putting on a lot of makeup. Uh -huh. And I will find myself literally up in my eye. Oh my god. Then you're a pro. If you can do it while driving, you're a pro. Again, not recommended. But don't do this at home, ladies. <laughs> don't curl and drive. Don't curl. We should put a public service announcement. Yeah. <laughs> so right now, I'm look up again. I'm just dragging the mascara down and giving it a little wiggle just to smudge it. I love a smudged mascara on the waterline and then dragging it down, Which really spreading it out. It? This is my favorite mascara in the world. My students know what it is. What is it? It is Hypnos Drama Waterproof. I will never, ever be happy with any other mascara. Okay. Like if they ever discontinue this, I'm just gonna have to shoot myself. Like there's nothing I can do. This is the best. That's not dramatic at all. No. <laughs> That's a normal statement. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now that she's looking down, I'm just going to pull up and just dig right into those top lashes. I love this mascara because it builds and it's spiky and I love those spider lashes. And I just, you know, especially with Indian brides, it's just about accentuating everything on the eyes. And so, I mean, the bigger the lash, the better. So I'm not about that lengthening stuff. I'm more about the thickening stuff. And then just by, like, stretching, 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 and, and uh, pushing through when you're applying it, you can build the length. The bigger the lash is, the bigger your vision. Ooh, I like. Okay. I just came up with that, actually. You should um, coin it. Well, they know where they heard it first. Exactly. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> So just lift that lid and go nuts with your mascara. Don't be afraid to dig into the roots of the client's lashes. If you if they need to blink, they will try to blink, and then you can feel that, <laughs> and then you can back off and then let them blink, and then get right in there and keep going again until they need to blink again. But make sure when you're doing lashes, guys, that you're following through to the tip. If you guys need help on lash um, application and stuff like that, I still have my lash video up until the end of the month. That's up on my website that you're on right now. It's the All About Lashes class with Lily Galici. That was the last class that I did, and I talked about everything about lashes, pretty much. It was like a freaking hour and a half class on lashes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You'd think it would be like a 10-minute thing? 
No, I tend to make everything complicated. <laughs> but in a very easy to replicate way. Okay. A very informative way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. You look like a doll. That's so gorgeous. Alright, let's slap on some lashes. Let's figure out which ones we're gonna use. Um I have gosh, I have literally every lash available, but what's in my kit right now? Um we'll use Okay, we're gonna use number six from model21lashes.ca. So model21lashes.ca, number six. It looks like this. It's very wispy and long. And I think that would look really cool on her eyes right now. And also, this case is from houseoflashes.com. And the glue that I'm using is from houseoflashes.com. That case is so cute. It's adorable. Oh my God. Cool. So, as you guys know from my last lash class, um, for those of you who've seen it, I like to first curl my lashes before I apply them. So I'm just going to give it a little curl real quick just to spike up the hairs. And now it's ready to... I love that curl. you do it before and not after you apply it because there's a lot of times that... Mm -hmm. and not that it hurts, not at all, but it'll end up coming up. Mm, yeah, and then to try fall. to get back in with the glue is harder than just curling it before. Exactly. That is a good point. All right, so I'm just I'm just brushing it on right now, brushing on the glue, and we're gonna let the glue get a little sticky, and then we're just gonna go ahead and apply it. And then if we want to go even more crazy, we can add more mascara to this look. So we're just gonna go ahead and look down. I'm gonna apply it to the center. Now I'm going to match outer corner and then match inner corner. Another reason why I love this particular lash, as well as my million other lashes that I have, is because it's short in width, so I don't have to cut the edges. How cute. Close your eyes a little. I'm just gonna make sure it's all the way adhered. And make sure the corners are really adhered well. And then go ahead and open. So pretty. Oh my god, I love that spiked out look. Same on the other side. Curl that lash first. Put on that glue. Get it sticky. And then apply it on yourself or on your client. And it will go on so much easier and better. I can't wait to find out who wins all the lashes that I'm giving away. Oh, there goes your tobacco. <laughs> okay, and now this baby. Let that stick well. Make sure the corners are really holding on nicely. Make sure the lashes underneath them are going in the same direction as the false ones are, that they're not bunching up and looking crazy. You never want that to happen because it's actually very uncomfortable for your client. And just I'm patting it down, making sure the glue is actually going through, everything's looking nice. And now she has these beautiful spiked up lashes, so gorgeous. I love my pointy nails because I could do the same thing with my nails. Okay. Love it. <laughs> love it. Oh my God. You literally look like an Indian doll right now. Like no joke. It's so, so good. Look like a doll. You know, sometimes I get so excited. And my, the, I had a student the other day and she was like, I love how you get excited on your own work. And I'm like, no, it's like, it's our work. Like, yeah. you know, it's not just the artist. It's like <laughs> everything, the whole everything comes together. Okay, cool. So now we are going to add lips and start to kind of complete this look. So I'm going to have you blot your um, lip balm. And then I'm going to apply whatever was left on the foundation brush that I used today. Apply it over her lips just to blink it out. And then we're going to use my NARS um, red pencil before I show you guys how to pin the tobacco, which keeps falling.
because it's so lightweight. If it was heavier, it would stay. Here is the brush that I use. This is a Morphe brush number M427. This lovely thing is what I used earlier just to um, do her uh, foundation. I switch up my brushes all the time, but this is my latest favorite. Okay, now it's all blank, ready to just go next. And the product I'm going to use is my NARS Cruella Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. I'm just going to sharpen it real quick so you guys can see its beauty. Uh, let me clean this real quick. Sorry for the delay. One second. Okay. NARS Cruella Velvet Matte Lip Pencil. It looks like this. Now you know how much I love it. It's a, down to a stub. I love a jumbo lip pencil. Oh my god. And it's so creamy. And it's long lasting because it's matte. It's not the shiny one. So this is Velvet Matte Lip Pencil Cruella. We're just going to go nuts. This can be used as a lip liner and a lipstick in one. And you don't even really need a gloss with it if you want that more matte look. But some of my um, brides do like gloss, so then I'll go ahead and apply some gloss over this. But I personally enjoy a matte look. So I'm just filling this whole thing in. Go ahead and face me a little bit. Perfect. If you don't want the jumbo pencil to go in the corners, you could always use a regular lip liner in those inner corners. Um, but I tend to, sometimes what I do is I'll do an ombre lip and go with a darker lip liner in the corners and just ombre it so it has some depth. Go ahead and open the mouth a little bit. Awesome. I'm just going to give it one more full coat all over to make it as rich as possible. And you can totally use a concealer around it to really, really um, give it a little bit more of that sharper effect. But what I'm going to do to give it that sharper effect is I'm going to add um, Current Lip Pencil from MAC. And that is what's going to give you that ombre effect and that beautiful gradient so we can get that um, a little bit more of a vampy look, but not quite. It's not going to be really vampy. It's just going to be a little bit on the deeper side. So just going right into the corner with this darker color called Current, and I'm fading it into the red. And just slightly. Face this way. And then with a lip brush, we're just going to fade the color in so you can't see where it starts and ends. So now we have this really awesome gradient on the lips. It's just so defined and it makes the lips look even fuller than they already are. But if you're looking for fuller lips, this is one of the ways that I like to make them fuller. And the um, I have another class coming up February 5th, which is about my secrets on how to do lips and my favorite colors and how to make them long lasting and how to ombre them the right way a little bit more than this. Um, just so many different ways of doing lips and cleaning them and all that stuff. So that's coming up next, but this is just a little preview on what you're going to see in that class and how easy it can be to create the most beautiful pout for any makeup look. So ta-da! Here is the finished amazing look minus the dupatta pinning. And what we're going to do at this point is create, um, trying to figure out where exactly you'd want to pin the dupatta. So we're going to kind of show you guys where I would do it. And then what I normally do on my brides or on my clients is I'll have them face the mirror so that they can see um, exactly where, how forward they want it or how back they want it. Um, and then I pin it 
according to what they like, as well as if I have approved that, as long as it looks good, can't do everything blindly. So first things first, you need a body pin. I do not use safety pins to pin a dupatta on the head, although a lot of you do. Um, I, I'm a little scared of that because if the safety pin pops on someone's head, that's a little frightening and dangerous. Um, so I don't do that. I just use bobby pins. And so in order to get the bobby pin to go through the cloth, I mean, like, this is, I'm so sorry, I don't have an Indian, like, my bridal dress is with my mom, and she's in San Francisco, and I'm in LA, so I don't have my bridal dress, um, dupatta, which is, like, a freaking 15, 20 pounds, um, to put on her, but this technique that I'm going to show you, although this is such a light dupatta, it's so easy, but this technique is going to work no matter how heavy your dupatta is. I've worked with 50 pound dupattas that are lined with velvet and diamonds and, like, craziness, wow. so heavy, but it worked because of this little trick I'm going to show you. So first of all, you need to bite off the rubber that's on the tips of the bobby pin. So you got to bite it off. I know, it's weird. I'm just like, throw it. <laughs> okay. So bite off the tip of the bobby pin. And once we figure out like where the center of your dupatta is, this is the center right here. This little fold is the center. So we want to figure out where we're going to pin it. So for her, I would say right um, right by the braid because I would probably want to see that pretty braid so I would pin it like so that the border barely just kind of covers the, the top part of the braid so I'm going to go ahead and find an area to pin right into her hair and what I'll do is I'm just going to move you this way so I can show them I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to find an area right by the border so that I'm not really like um putting so much weight on such a thin cloth. So right by the border, I'm going to stick this pin to, to go through the um, cloth like a prong. I'm going to stick it right in and make sure it's going to her hair by her scalp. Now, in order for that pin to not slide around, I'm going to grab another pin. Without removing the rubbers, I'm going to find where I pinned it and put a cross pin right across that pin. So this pin is going this way, and now I'm putting a pin this way, right across that first pin, to hold that pin down. So there's two pins that are being placed right now. There's one pin that went through this cloth, and another pin, so one pin like this, and then another pin like this, that's crossing that pin and holding that pin onto the scalp of her hair, or on her hairdo, on her bun, whatever, wherever you want to pin it, so it actually stays. So now, no matter how much a little kid pulls at her dupatta, or how much grandma wants to kiss you, it's not going to move. And that's just one cross. Now, I do this all the way around so that no weird folds happen on the top of the hair. So I'm going to do one more here and one more here, each crossed. And then over here is where you would use actual safety pins on the shoulders to then arrange where you, how you would want to style your dupatta. I am not a wardrobe stylist, I'm not a fancy pleater or whatever, but I can do a dupatta pretty well. So um, at this point, like once it's all pinned everywhere, which I'll just go ahead and do now, um, once it's all pinned, I'm going to have you hold this, um, then you can go ahead and have the bride stand up, and then you can drape the rest of the piece um, according to how her family wants it, pretty much. Um... If you are not comfortable doing the whole, like, draping of this thing, like, you could pin. Anyone can pin. If I could pin, anyone can pin. So, I'm mean, going to expect you guys to know how to pin now that I've shown you. So, pin it, but um, if you're not comfortable with, like, the actual pleating in this part of it, you can have one of the aunties of the family do the pleating and help you, and as long as you've done it to the head, because the aunties don't know how to pin it on the head. They make all the body pins show not cute. No, no, no. So again, I'm going right through this, um, this cloth. I pin it right to the bottom of her braid. And I'm going to use another pin now to pin across that bobby pin so that doesn't move around at all. Actually, two is all we really need for this lightweight to butt up. But anyway, so now it's pinned. Super cool, nothing's gonna move. And because this particular dupatta is still lightweight, she doesn't need any pinning on her shoulders. But however, if the dupatta was like heavy like mine was, which I 
didn't even wear on my head, by the way. I was like, so not having that. But I was able to get away with it because I married now again and they don't wear me nothing. So um, over here, like you could just, you know, pleat it up. What I normally do is I'll just kind of hold it down on the shoulder, start with one pleat, fold over another pleat, fold over the last pleat so that that final piece of border shows at the end. And it looks good with this piece of border that's showing. And then you would safety pin it right on the shoulder. So when she's standing, it would be like this beautiful kind of a waterfall of pleats. And the back has this curvature to it. And if she wants, she can even pin this edge to her sleeve. And you could pin it right here so that while she's dancing and stuff, this lovely piece of cloth will be flowing around um, around her. So there's just so many ways to do a dupatta, and I hope the pinning helps. So just remember when you're pinning your dupattas, put the first pin in and then cross it with another pin to hold that pin down underneath the dupatta. So I put the first pin, I look under to find where the pin went, and I cross right through it, and then the, the border of the dupatta goes over. So I'm pinning right behind the border so that I can still use this border to then hide the rest of the hair or whatever we want to do, okay? So let's get a final look at you. Mm -hmm. um, this lovely piece could also be um, glued down with a Bombay, I'm sorry, with the um, House of Lashes glue. Um, you could just actually paint it right behind on all the edges and then hold it down on the skin and it will glue down so that while she's dancing and twirling around doing her Bollywood moves, this thing isn't swinging around and looking all crazy. And the way that I pinned the tikka in was really just with bobby pins as well. The end of the tikka, I just bobby pinned it right into her hair um, and put the spray over it. Um, and then you could just glue this part down so that it doesn't move around or anything like that. So let's get a nice close-up view of you so everyone can see how gorgeous you look. We're going to zoom in and I'm going to have you do a side-to-side -side turn, yes. the signature side-to-side. -side. That's perfect. Awesome. So go ahead and turn to the right. Gorgeous. And look down. Beautiful, beautiful. And now turn the other way. I love. I'm so happy with this look. You actually rocked it like crazy. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you for being a part of this <laughs> class. I had so much, so much fun. fun. We learned a lot. And I hope you guys learned a lot too. And um, let's say bye to Julissa. Thank you so bye much guys. for being a part of this Thanks class. Thanks for having me. Now you're ready to go to an Indian wedding, although there is none today. <laughs> or maybe there is. We'll look for one. I'll find something to get into. <laughs> sure. Amazing, amazing. Again, the outfit is from Lashkara.com. I will um, tag them in my next post. And the jewelry is from Panache by Guinea. She's a good friend of mine, and she has actually um, given us a little surprise. So the surprise is, for the next giveaway, the one lucky winner is going to receive this entire jewelry set that she's wearing right now. So it includes this whole necklace. Can we zoom out just a little bit? That's sick, you guys. It's so beautiful. And the earrings aren't even that heavy. They're like... It's not so bad, right? No, it's not at all. all. So I went through like all her jewelry that she had and I was like, okay, this is the one I want to give away on my thing. So this necklace, because it's so versatile, it's pearls and like jewels, so it will go with everything, everything literally. So you could wear this, and we have the crystal chandelier earrings, and we have the matching tikka. This entire jewelry set is going to one lucky winner, and I will explain all the rules in my giveaway post coming um, either super late tonight or early morning tomorrow, most likely in the morning. Um, so I will explain all that tomorrow morning. I will also announce the giveaway winners of the House of Lashes giveaway, most likely tomorrow morning as well. So we can get all that cleared up on our computer and randomly choose so we can be fair. All right. Thank you guys. Thank Let's you. Say bye. And I'm going to come in and answer some questions when she leaves. Um, or actually, why don't you hang out for a little bit? Yeah. Let's switch spots. <laughs> I'm having next to me. That way I can do a photo shoot with you okay, after cool. class. Okay. And you guys can follow me at official Julissa B. That's J-U-L-I-S-S-A B like boy. I'll be reposting a lot of Tamil. So Today's <laughs> And I tagged on my last post too so you can kind of see all the fun stuff that's on her page and her touring around and doing her thing mm -hmm. on TV and um, keep tabs on her future projects, which is going to be a lot this year. Here, I'll give you this. All right. Gorgeous.
Sick. Actually, here, down right here. I want to see like a good. Aww. Use toe. Oh my god. All I need is the moves. Oh, you I love it. how you can like stuff your face and you wouldn't even know. Oh yeah, it's a loose dress. You <laughs> totally eat everything you want. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'll okay. be taking notes over here. Okay. Sounds good. I'm going to pop up this chair because I'm such a shrimp. And now I'm going to answer some of your questions. We have about 10, 15 minutes of Q&A time before we leave. Okay. Am I high enough? I'm such a shorty. Okay. I hope this is good. Um, okay. So on this last post, if you guys have questions, this post that I posted an hour ago is the post to ask your questions on so that I can answer them now. Okay. Lissy. Um, oh, you, some of you missed the lashes. The lashes that I used on her are model21lashes.ca. That's the website name. And the lash style is number six. That is one of my latest crazes in um, regular disposable lashes. They are not uh, real hair. They're not mink. It's just totally synthetic. And it's really, really affordable. So I just use it and throw it away. It's, you know, I buy them by the box. So it's super, super easy to um, play around with. Let's see some other questions. Oh, some of you guys are asking, um, how would you line round eyes? Well, to create an almond shaped eyes for round eyes, you would need to extend the ends to create that slant. So for round eyes, what I would do with the gel eyeliner or a liquid liner is to create a little point here to, to the inner wing thing, create that little point and then create a point on the outer end. And I did this in the Arabic eye class. Um, so you guys can see that, um, I know it's gone. I know some of you guys are like, what? We can't see it. You will be able to see it again if you'd like to. There will be an option pretty soon to rent old videos. The ones that are, you know, people want an encore or people that just started now and missed those past episodes will be able to rent those pretty soon. And I'll let you guys know when that feature is back. But basically with the round eyes, you just want to add that inner corner and you want to add that outer corner and really extend it and smoke it on the outer part portion, which is what I did with Jalissa. I added that wing and I um, shaded it in. That's what you want to do for round eyes too. And then you get that really sexy cat eye shape. There's, there's a lot that makeup can do. Very fun. Very, very fun. Um, so what's your favorite crease colors? Okay, I'm going to list some of my favorite crease colors. Um, brown script for a very, very warm crease. Bengal is what I usually start my crease with, um, always. It's just a, the perfect soft brown, um, just to get that shadowing going, and then I can always darken it with sh chocolate or whatever. Um, th those are Anastasia Beverly Hills colors, but um, Brown Script is MAC. And then Texture is another good one from MAC. Um, soft Brown is a very, very, very soft brown from MAC. Um, and if you're looking for colors in the crease, like crease colors, there's a lot of corals and pinks. Let me show you. Uh, some of the ones that could work for Indian brides. So if you're looking, like if your Indian bride is wearing like golden pinks, like usually the pink is going to be like a hot pink, you could totally put a hot pink in the crease after you've already done the brown. So I always start off with the browns. And then if I want to add like a switch of color, then I could add like, like I did with the brown script, I added that at the end. You could do that with this pink one, which is called Passionate from MAC. So that's one of the options that I like to put in the crease. Sometimes I like to put purple in the crease if the bride's wearing some purple tones or peacock tones. The purple that I like to use in the crease um, it depends on how purple I want to go. If I want it more of like a like a grape reddish purple, then I'll use this color called... Oh my god, what the heck is it called? It's so dirty. Plum, plum dressing. This one here. Oh my god, I can't even switch it there. This is Plum Dressing from MAC. And then if you want it more deeper purple, like a truer purple, then use Nocturnal, which is this one here. And I like to use that in the crease for a more purple look. Um, and then what else do I put in the crease? I, I never put blues and greens in the crease. I feel like it just looks really, really harsh and very 1993. Um, so it's not going to happen here. 
So I stick with warm tones in the crease. The most I'll do is like a purple or a pink, but um, I'll stick to like browns and rusty shades. Sometimes I'll put coral in the crease, like an orangey tone that looks really good on warm skin. And the orangey tone that I put in the crease sometimes if I really need to is called Rule. It's a great blending color because it's just so matte and perfect. So that's a good blending color to put in the crease. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then like lid colors, I usually stick with metallic. So usually metallic gold or a metallic taupey grayish color or, um, uh, you know, metallics. Perfect. Let's see the next question. Okay, would you do this look exactly for a bride? If not, what would you do differently? Would you go bolder, extend the eyes, etc.? This is exactly what I do on my brides if they ask for a look like this. Um, but I do like to change it up b between bride to bride just because, you know, everyone's face is a little different and, you know, maybe I want to accentuate something else on someone or maybe their colors of their outfit are a little bit different. But basically the steps are exactly the same. Um, placement of color could be a little different if you'd like and you could substitute the colors like I said like with the pinks or the purples or whatever you could substitute the colors based on their outfit that's the thing a lot of American schools teach you that you cannot you should not be matching your eyeshadow to your outfit color but that's because it would look very tacky with American clothes you just don't really do that um, with the Indian clothes however or Pakistani clothes or Middle Eastern embroidery and that kind of stuff you you can totally match your eyeshadow to your clothes. I wouldn't go totally blue and red on her because she's wearing blue and red. What we did was we matched the gold and we added red lips and that kind of matched. And I could have totally done a little bit of blue, uh, navy blue eyeshadow on the outer corner of her eyes and she would look perfect. So that wouldn't look tacky at all. But the main color you want to match is the color of the embroidery. Um, so her, because the embroider was like a very soft gold, I put that nice antique gold on her lid. And then, you know, you could also incorporate color on the lips or whatnot. So um, as far as like other ways to do bridal makeup, yeah, you can absolutely extend the eyes. You could do a hybrid between this and the Arabic eye. So the Arabic eye, what I did was it was a cut crease. So I could easily, instead of making the crease all blended like hers, I could have totally added a cut crease instead. And it would have been a hybrid between Bollywood and Arabic. Um, and, uh, or you could do a smoky eye. I've done smoky eye, the 3D smoky eye from my, one of my last classes. Um, I've done that on a Bollywood girl and to make it look more Bollywood is I added glitter right in the center and I added a pop of color right underneath to match her outfit and I, we did a bold lip on her. So, and with all the jewelry and stuff, it became so Bollywood, but it was actually my 3D smoky eye from this 3D smoky eye class that I'll put up to rent pretty soon for you guys. So, um, yeah, you can do anything you want for bridal as long as they're happy and you're happy and it looks good with the outfit and it shows good in pictures. That's really what matters. This is just the most popular bridal look that I'm known for, um, for Bollywood looks. This is kind of what it is. And it's just so versatile because it doesn't involve like a crazy cut crease. It doesn't involve crazy shaping. It's really about accentuating a soft almond shape. So it actually looks good on almost every single person. Like I don't know of anyone that can't rock this look. Even Asian eyes can rock this look. But with Asian eyes, I usually recommend going a little bit smokier or you could do a cut crease with Asian eyes if you need to create a crease. You can easily do a cut crease while the eyes are open, draw along where you want to see a crease and then they can close their eyes and you can create your um, cut crease effect. And we'll go over that another time too. But I also talk about it in my cut crease class, um, which will uh, be back up pretty soon. So, um, what are the main glitter colors that you carry in your kit? I love golds and silvers and champagne tones. Those are pretty much all I carry in my kit. I own every single color under the sun. I own all those crazy blues and reds and purples and all sorts of colors. But honestly, I want my brides to look very classy and not look like they're going to a Vegas party. So I rather just put gold or silver or a champagne tone. And most of my loose glitters are all from Shop Violet Voss and eye candy and motives, a few of them. Um, I mean, glitter is glitter, but I would say out of everyone, um, Shop Violet Voss and Eye Candy Cosmetics have the biggest selections. And um, Shop Violet Voss has been sponsoring my tours in the past. And so I have a lot of practice with Shop Violet Voss colors, um, but I'm absolutely not opposed to trying others. Um, and they're all like the golds and silvers and stuff like that. Um, let's see a few more colors. Dun, 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 dun. Um, how do you achieve flawless skin with the clients that have dry and dehydrated skin? 
um, because you guys know that I use a lot of powder on my clients in order to keep their skin and their makeup on all night long. I don't want to use very, very wet products and keep them wet on the skin or dewy on the skin because it's literally just going to wipe right off onto their groom shirt. So um, I do set it with a crap load of powder. So the question is about the dry skin people. So with dry skin, unfortunately, I can't go that crazy with the powder. So I do tone it down a little bit. I still add all that powder with the same Studio Fix powder, but I don't go that crazy. And then the other thing is there are hydrating mists out there that can create a little bit more of a hydrated look for you even after you're done with the powder. I'm not a fan of sprays, but I do carry the Skin to Nivea spray. It's actually a primer spray, but you could totally use it after the makeup is done on your client if they feel super dry. Like I used it on Christina Million the other night, or was it last night? I forget what day it is. God. Anyway, I used it on Christina Million because I put a lot of powder on her. And I didn't want her to feel dry. She went to a premiere and I wanted her to glow. So um, she asked if I had a, a spray and this was a spray I had and it worked perfectly on her. Um, but I also do have one other spray, which is, well, I have, actually I have a few sprays that I don't use. But the other one that I've used is the MAC um, Charged Water. It's the mineral, mineralized spray. And that one actually does add a lot of moisture to the skin, a lot of hydration and stuff like that for those who feel like they have that dry look after powder. Just spray yourself down and you shall be okay. And make sure for dry skin clients that you're really making sure that they've prepped themselves or you can prep them with a really good eye cream and moisturizer for their face so that they don't crack up while you're um, doing their makeup. Um... Uh, someone's asking, I've always taught to do eyes first and foundation at the, oh, they were always taught to do eyes, to do eyes first and then foundation at the end. Um, what do I normally do? I normally do face first and then eyes only because, well, there's a lot of reasons and I, I did explain it in one of my classes, but it was in a Q and A, so I don't know if you guys are going to go back to see that. Um, the reason why I like to do face first is because I'm a very visual person. I like to see everything balanced and everything contoured to the gods and everything perfectly perfect before I go into all those detailed things. So when it comes to the eyes and the lips and the cheeks, I feel like those things are detailed stuff that I can only fully do to my best degree if that face is perfect first. So I'm all about perfect balance. So I do the face first just because I'm a visual person. Another reason that works well for me, it was because I don't have fallout when I'm working. As you guys saw, um, the way I do makeup and the way I do my eyes and stuff, nothing really falls. Um, I'm not a messy blender. I don't, actually, I don't even blend, as you guys saw. All I do is slap product on, slide it, and move on to the next color. I don't really have that, um, I don't really have blending in my steps. It's just not even listed in my steps. Like, what I do to blend is really when I'm putting on product, I just slide it over the next color so it looks like it's blending in, but it's really not requiring much blending. And of course the brushes make a huge difference. Using a nice small tapered brush is gonna give you a lot more definition where using a more fluffy brush is gonna give you more of a blended version and it could get a little messy. So, and then of course the product too. If you're, pro if you're working with very, very black items, like I used a shadow shield and just held it up under her eye I didn't stick it on because I already had makeup on. I didn't want to like stick it off or peel it off. So I just held it up and I was able to do the black, the super, super black eyeshadow on her without any um, issues happening. So, you know, those are some ways that I could get around with any, you know, possible fallout if, if I do feel like, oh my God, this is going to be messy. Um, and then lastly, when you're doing a bride especially, photographer wants to come and take pictures. So during the process. What good are those pictures of the eye makeup that you're doing if the face is so raw on camera? Even if your client's face is beautiful and has great skin or whatnot, it's not going to look right in the photo unless you filter the crap out of it or unless your photographer ends up blurring the whole skin and only keeping the eye sharp. It's like you can't even use those on Instagram or in your portfolio. So I prefer, and of course your brides aren't going to feel so great about the photographer taking all those pictures. She's not going to post it if her face isn't looking perfect. So for photography reasons as well, I have the face completely done. By the time I get to the eyes and the photographer wants to take pictures of me applying lashes and doing all those pretty things, the face is already looking bomb. So the pictures look amazing and they make awesome posts for Instagram. It's so beautiful. When I post behind the scenes of brides or like me working on brides, 
like every, you know, it's a great way to show you in action and it inspires your followers to see you while you're at work and already see the beauty of it and you're not even done yet. So I like face first. I just do. Okay, a couple more questions and then um, we'll get going. Oh, no blush. Oh, yeah, blush and highlight. Well, do you want to come back? I could do your blush and highlight? Sure. All right, I'll do her blush and highlight. She didn't really need it because I contoured her so much. And with red lips, you can get away with actually not wearing any blush. Um, th with red lips, the blush that I usually use is either like a total tan color, like not even like a color color. Or you could use like kind of a corally tone, like as long as it's warm. But um, you could totally go get away with not using any blush when you're using red lips. But I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of blush on her now. Just so you guys can see. Thank you for reminding me. You guys are so freaking awesome. One time I forgot a step. In one of my last classes, and they totally reminded me. In my Arabic eye class, remember when I had to do the gap thingy? You were like, wait, what about the gap? And so, it happens, it happens. Okay. There's so a lot going on here. I know. I'm like, I already love the way you look. Like, you don't really need the blush at all. I know, you contoured me so good that I, I even yeah. forgot. And I'm a total blush girl. Really? What? Oh. I blush to no end. Oh my god, that's so funny. You like, didn't even I blush it. for the cheap seats. Anybody sitting... <laughs> the last row of any arena. That is so funny. Me blushing. Oh my god. Okay. Well, like now you guys know, like this look can totally be rocked without blush. But let's go ahead and do it. We're gonna um before we do blush, I'm, I want to add shimmer. The shimmer that I'm gonna add is the Galactic Face Glow in Bronze. It is one of my absolute I know, favorites. You do? Have you tried yes. it? Yes. Oh my god, I'm a huge it's fan. So good. Huge fan of Galactic. So I'm just going to use like a little perfect match here. here. I'm a beauty junkie. She's awesome. the best. So Aww. Match made in heaven. Okay, so this is a tapered brush. This is from Hakuhodo. Wow, I completely erased the name because I use it so much. But Morphe also makes the same brush now. And so I'm just going to lightly add to the apples of the cheeks and also the cheekbone. This lovely highlight here. Wow. Beautiful, right? And it's in bronze. That's so the color name. I'm going to add a little bit here on the forehead as well. And a little bit on the chin just to give that overall glow. Now, if you want your highlight to be specifically just in one area and very strong, then I recommend using your fingers and sliding it on and rubbing it in and then blending just with a clean finger. And that way you have a much stronger beam of light and it's more concentrated because you use your hands. So if you want a soft glow, use a brush. If you want a strong beam, then use your fingers. Just slide it right on, buff it in the skin, and then blend the edges with a clean finger. And now you have this beautiful beam glow. Amazing balls. And now for the blush. It looked fantastic prior but now I'm it's like right it's on the next level Bollywood next level. princess bride this is the blush we're gonna use today it's called copper tone just a light hint of it and we're gonna apply it right on the cheeks here basically right along the contour but just a little bit above it and that's it. That's the most I would do with a red lip. I would not really go any heavy, any more heavy than this. So let's do a side to side again. We're gonna zoom it. And we're gonna do a little side to side action for you. Okay, go ahead. And slowly turn. Beautiful. Beautiful. Stunning. Alright, that is the conclusion. My one. It's amazing. All right. Okay. We're done. I think we're officially done now. I've answered your questions. Mm -hmm. I will try my best to answer more um, via my blog, my new blog, and um, in the comments as well. And later on, you guys are going to find out about this giveaway with this lovely jewelry. I'm going to go over that, and I'm going to give you guys the flyer for that tomorrow morning. What else am I going to do? I'm also Remind them to get the whole set. The entire set. The entire set. You guys are getting hooked up. Very much so. <laughs> the stuff isn't cheap. 
And I'm also going to announce the winners of the last class. So that will happen um, most likely tomorrow morning. So keep your eyes open. Thank you again, Jalissa. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.